This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news for the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me and happy new year. We are starting with some generally good news, namely that sales figures are now rolling in for 2024. As usual, we try and give global figures, but I will let you know when they're not available. Tesla finished 2024 having delivered 1.79 million vehicles, down on the 1.81 million vehicles it managed in 2023. Poor fourth quarter sales are to blame. Lucid's end of year sales were up on 2023 with the luxury brand producing 9,029 cars and delivering 10,241. Lucid shares rose 8% on the news. Ford shared its year-end figures for the US, I'm afraid I don't have its global figures at the time of filming, showing EV sales of 97,865 EVs. Its Mark E came second to the Tesla Model Y in the fourth quarter, while its Ford F-150 outsold the Cybertruck in the same. GM officially ended 2024 with the second largest EV sales volume of any automaker in the US, achieving sales of 114,000 EVs during the year. Its Chevy Equinox EV and Cadillac Lyric EV were its most popular EV models. Polestar published its global figures for 2024, tallying a total of 44,851 vehicles during the year, down 15% on 2023. Volvo finished 2024 setting a new sales record across its lineup, thanks in part to a 54% surge in EV sales. 352,787 EVs were sold by Volvo globally. Toyota was boasting electrified vehicle sales in the US of over 1 million last year, but that's primarily down to hybrids. During the year, it achieved EV sales of just 18,570 vehicles, placing it at the lower end of the sales charts. That was not a problem for Honda, though, which was celebrating a good first year of sales for its Prologue EV in North America. It sold just over 33,000 examples, while its luxury arm Acura sold 7,391 ZDX models. While we don't have Kia's global EV sales, it did have a great 2024 in North America, managing sales of over 43,700 units. We sadly don't have Kia e Nero sales to add to that list. Kia's sister brand Hyundai also had an amazing year, with 56,664 EVs sold in North America, while its global ICE sales figures across all brands dropped, EV sales continued to grow. Mercedes-Benz, which hasn't published global figures yet, had a poor 2024 on the North American EV front, selling 27,508 models, down substantially on the 47,400 of the previous year. Back to global figures now, and Rivian had its best year yet, selling 51,579 vehicles last year, up a thousand and change on the previous year. It's not the growth the company had hoped for, but it is growth. BYD's year-end sales figures place it within spitting distance of Tesla, selling 1.765 million EVs during 2024. It actually made more EVs than Tesla, but Tesla sold some 24,000 more. And finally for the roundup of sales, and I want to note that some automakers haven't published figures at the time of filming, Xiaomi became the surprise of 2024, selling a massive 135,000 vehicles in its first year of production, it says it wants to double that next year. Oklahoma-based EV startup Canoes Future is looking uncertain as the company denies rumours of unpaid bills and arranges to sell off assets. On January 2nd, a public notice was posted on Bid It Up, announcing that the company would be selling off its engineering and manufacturing equipment from its Torrance, California facility as part of its realignment of the North American operations. At the same time, anonymous sources from the company claim that the building Canoe rents as a production facility, a building belonging to a whole company owned by Canoe CEO Tony Aquila owes Canoe millions of dollars. A contract obtained by local news shows a clause in which AFV, Aquila's property management company, promises to pay Canoe millions of dollars in tenant improvement funds, which insiders now say never materialised. Canoe denies the reporting. At the end of last year, we told you about the rumoured merger between Honda and Nissan, and now it's official. 
confirmed at the end of the year the two firms have signed a letter of intent to hold talks on business integration with plans to establish a jointly owned holding company. Mitsubishi is also expected to join in the merger, which, if successful, would make the resulting company the third largest automaker in the world by volume. But it's still very early days and it's expected both brands will continue to make vehicles under their own badges, combining their research and development divisions and working on shared joint platforms to underpin future models. There's no specific detail on what this will mean for each brand's EVs, but we can expect more details in the coming months as talks continue. A team of battery researchers at Dalhousie University, led by renowned battery specialist Jeff Dahn, have announced something of a milestone in the development of monocrystalline EV battery cells. While the team, which is partly funded by Tesla, has been working on a single crystal electrode material, aka monocrystalline cells for several years, their latest paper focuses on the results of research taken into the structural health of cells when compared to polycrystalline cells. Taking a monocrystalline NMC532 cell and comparing it to a polycrystalline NMC622 cell, the team used a new technique to analyze each cell structure after six years of charging and discharging cycles, a high-energy synchrotron XRD, or SR XRD for short. The researchers found that the extra image resolution offered by this new technique allowed them to observe structural changes at the microscopic level that weren't previously visible. And that led to an important discovery. The polycrystalline cells had many tiny fractures in their electrodes, but the monocrystalline cells had no such problems. I haven't had time to dig into this in depth here, but let us know if you'd like us to do that. It was CES this week, and there were plenty of things happening at the event, including some very important EV reveals. And one of them was the official public debut of Aptera's production tent solar electric vehicle, along with the official announcement that it's chosen LG Energy Solutions as its battery supplier of choice. Interestingly, Aptera took a bit of a divide and conquer approach at the show, with one static display vehicle showing its finished interior and body panels, while a second mechanically complete vehicle gave short rides to journalists. The PI interior looks very minimal and I cannot wait to get some seat time if I'm offered it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Aptera has taken a lot longer to reach production preparedness than we would have liked and with the US likely to lose some of its EV friendly policies this year, the next year is going to be very tough for all EV startups. Also at CES this week, Sony Honda Mobility officially revealed the details of its first production car in the form of the Afila One EV. Now, we've seen this vehicle get developed over the last five years or so, and this week we learned just how much the car will set you back in production form. Packed with technology and envisaged as a concept of mobility as a creative entertainment space with screens galore and the latest in connectivity, this vehicle is clearly targeted at the luxury tech market and the price is consequentially kind of high. The launch edition Alfila One Signature retails from just under 103,000 US dollars, while the entry level Alfila One Origin is just under 90 grand. That's not exactly cheap, but it certainly ties into what seems to be a trend in the auto industry right now for high end luxury vehicles with huge amounts of pointless tech instead of mass market affordable vehicles with sensibly priced battery packs. But before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should check out our buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes tons of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay your RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. I'm going to finish today's show with two very important studies chronicling EV adoption around the world. And the first one is a very interesting study about EV charging. It's long been maintained, especially by those who don't like EVs, that in order for EVs to become mainstream, we need refueling times that are as quick as gasoline vehicles. But a new study of potential EV customers by research firm Deloitte suggests that's no longer the case. It asked 31,000 people from 30 different countries about their attitudes towards charging, and it discovered that in the US, attitudes are, in fact, 
changing. In addition to the 7.7% who said they'd wait for up to 40 minutes to charge to 80% full from empty at a fast charging station, it also found that 35% of respondents said they only drive 60 miles or more from home once or twice a month, and 23% said they never went that far. Add in the nearly 8% who said they only planned on charging at home, and it could reshape how we think and feel about fast charging in the US. And finally, I'm sure by now most people watching this are aware of the health benefits of owning EVs, but just how much of a benefit are they to society? A new study in Canada has worked it out. According to a just published research paper from the University of Toronto, making the switch from gasoline to electric in the US could save the US up to 188 billion US dollars in health costs by 2050. That's if the nation shifts from gasoline to electric, changes its electrical grid to renewable sources of energy, and gets rid of many of the polluting oil production facilities that dot the nation. It's long been known that polluted air can worsen the health of a community, from respiratory conditions to premature death infant mortality and more, so here's hoping that someone pays attention. As a Canadian, a Brit and American citizen, I would prefer it if all three countries remained completely independent. I'm just, just saying. And on that note, we are done for the day's show. Before I go though, make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't switched yet, don't forget to switch to Altera's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as per usual, but in the meantime, do check out the lovely Gavin QE EV Shoebridge's offerings on this very same channel. He's always doing something that's well worth a look, so make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.